right, how you doing, everybody? This is Robert Rivera with the show, Who's On First? And I have a special guest, Keith. And today we're going to talk about uh, baseball cards and uh, probably some more interesting cards, more than just baseball. So go ahead, Keith, introduce yourself. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Keith Holtz. I've been collecting since uh, the late 80s. Um, collect a little bit of everything. I like baseball, basketball, football. Um, I put together old uh, vintage baseball sets, um, basketball sets, IPC, LeBron James, Tom Brady, Michael Jordan cards. And, uh, and at heart, I'm a diehard Jaguars fan. What makes a card more expensive than other cards? Um, it really, it, I mean, obviously, first off, the player. You know, there's, you know, you have common, play, common players, you know, and, and your star players. Um, you know, various sets, obviously, as things age, they get more valuable. But, you know, a lot of sets also have condition issues, like 1971 Topps Baseball, for example. That, that set has a black border, um, which is very prone to chipping. So a lot of cards from that set, if you can get them in mint condition, they, they hold extreme premiums um, and value. Um, but really, you know, it, it's all about demand. It's, it's what people want. You know, things... Things are very volatile in the in the sports market. You know, it goes in trends. You know, sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that, um, and and it kind of comes and goes. And it's really a matter of kind of riding the wave and staying up to up to par on on what's trendy. Um, it's it's an always changing market. So basically, when you're collecting cards, it's like a stock market type of deal. It it is it is. But in all honesty, I sometimes consider it safer than the stock market. Because a 1933 Lou Gehrig rookie is never going to go down in value, whereas you could put your life savings into into Nasdaq or Dow Jones and lose the money tomorrow. You know, hypothetically, it could happen. So, but but it is it's similar to a stock market. Now, with the the Hall of Fame of last year, Derek Jeter is a is a hot ticket, and I just happened to have a Derek Jeter card here, and it's funny because this. This little, I bought this set um, back way years ago, and it's a minor league baseball card set from Classic, Classic Best, and it came with 450 cards, and I really never thought anything of it. It was five bucks at a discount place, and I started looking through it um, maybe a couple years back, and I actually found some interesting players, and there's um, Johnny Damon, minor league card there there is the um let me see what we got here oh it's andy pettit andy pettit in there um we have hall of famer chipper jones good old chipper chipper jones yeah good florida guy um let's see what else we had here oh another hall of famer mike piazza okay and yeah one uh one of my favorite guys is Ken Griffey Jr. Absolutely. And one of the best swings in baseball ever. Yeah, pretty pretty swing. One of the prettiest lefty swings I've ever seen. And Absolutely. My one of my favorites is Derek Jeter. And it's it's a minor league card. So I mean, I come up to you and I say, "Hey, you know, Keith, I got this minor league, you know, Derek Jeter. What what do you think it'd be worth?" I mean, how how would we come up to a price on this? Realistically, the best thing to do is you have to check your online sources and you have to see what recent issues of the card have sold for, um, you know, then take into take into account, you know, the condition of the card. So obviously, you know, you can't compare a damaged card to a mint card. So it's just a matter of finding what recent issues have sold for if your card is graded, what the grade is, and then compare it to others. And really, it's just a matter of finding your averages and then coming up to a, a price that's that's good for both both parties. Okay, all right. Now I know you mentioned some grading there. How does how does that work? So I take this Derek Jeter card and I say, hey, you know, I want you know ten bucks for it, and you say, hey, I can give you five. But if you grade it, you know, maybe you can get more for it. How would how would grading work work with this card? Well, thing especially with older cards like that now. When you send it out for grading, I mean, first thing to do is do your homework on what what company you want to send it to. The two major companies right now are BGS and PSA. Um, those those are the two best to send it to. Uh, myself, um, my preference is with older cards like that. I prefer PSA. 
I feel the secondhand market is, is better. You know, I typically will use BGS for newer cards. And that and that's just kind of a, a personal preference. Um, you know, some people might disagree with me, some people might agree. But it's it's just a matter of sending your cards to the company. I know it, it's kind of scary the thought of sending, you know, valuables like that through the mail, but luckily I've never had an issue. But depending on the grade of your card, it 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 puts the value, it, it changes it significantly. You know, okay. a ten dollar card raw, you know, might if it gets a PSA 10. Could sell for 150, 200 dollars plus. Okay, all right. So, how would that process work? I just go online. Yep, there's there's submission groups you can use. Um, a lot of local card shops take submissions like that, where you can drop it off with them and they mail it for you. You can mail direct. Um, there's there's a few different avenues you can do with that. Okay, I'm a firm believer of it. if you're going to get something like that to resell, you need to have it graded. It's especially helpful. Um for cards that are known to have heavy counterfeits because it's also often, you know, you're, you're getting authenticity with the card as well. Okay. So how much would something, if I want to grit that grade, how much would it be? Um, recently, the, uh, the the card companies have kind of cut back on what they call their, their bulk submissions, which is the lowest tier um, with the longest wait, um, just, just due to COVID and, and other factors and them having a significant backlog right now. Um, right now, the cheapest level, I believe, is a hundred. It's like a hundred or hundred and twenty-five dollars or so um, to grade right now. So, really, the only cards that should be getting sent in right now are, are your heavy hitter cards. You know, your Michael Jordan rookies of the world, or, or you know, expensive Kobe Bryant's, expensive Jeters, things like that. Okay. All right. And then uh, once you get these cards back, what uh, what do you, what do they look like? It um, depends a... on your company. So I can show you a BGS slab and a, and a, a PSA slab and kind of show you the difference here. Okay. So this right here is a 2011 update Mike Trout rookie. So it was given the grade Gem Mint 9.5 um, by Beckett. So what Beckett also does is they do what they call subgrades right here. So they give your card um, separate grades on like centering, corners, edges and the surface as well so it's very very hard to get a bgs 10 very very difficult only gotten a couple <laughs> but all the thousands of cards i've sent in they're they're very very strict okay um, but you know it's a thick slab it's heavy duty i mean it's 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 in there good it, it doesn't bend it's it's a well-made slab okay now for psa i got a really nice luka Doncic rookie okay so you see this one was graded PSA 10, which is worth more than a BGS 9.5. Okay. And, uh, but, they, but they do not do subgrades on these. So okay. this, is, this is just a flat, a, a flat grade. And that's, you know, and that's what they do with it. Now, these are a thinner slab. Mm -hmm. So they're a little bit easier for storage. Right. But I'm still a fan of the slab itself. I mean, it's, it's sturdy, doesn't bend. It's still very well done. Let me see. I got, I have a couple myself and um, I have a Roger Clemens. Let me see. This is a Roger Clemens rookie and it's a WCG 10 gem mint 1989 score number 35 Roger Clemens. Um, I don't know what the value would be on these. Um, I got one more. Let me see. Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle, like a gold leaf card. That's also, okay. that was a 10 gem WCG. The Jeter one, I don't know what this is, USA Sports Cards Association. I don't even know if they're even around anymore. These guys. I, I, haven't, even, I haven't even heard of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's graded a nine. So uh, let me see. I know uh, you had a Derek Jeter there. Did you have a Jeter yeah. card? I do. Um, one of his, one of his toughest rookies to get, this is, this is really the rookie to have. This wow. is, this is his, yeah, his upper deck SP rookie. This one is notorious for having a, a center uh, surface issues. So okay. this, this whole front of this card, it, it, it's like a, it's, it's like a hollow foil. So a lot of the time over the years, these get chipped. And even with the old vintage boxes now, you really can't open them to try to to try to pull these because a lot of the cards are are bricked together and they're stuck now. 
So if you try to pull them apart, they're going to come, they're going to come out even more damaged. So, um, mint, you know, mint copies of these are, are very hard to get. You know, I, okay. I don't even have anything above a nine. I've, I've got the nine and that's it. I don't even have a nine, five or a 10. Okay. So I, I come to you and I say, Hey, you know, Keith, I want to buy that card. How much are we talking? Uh, this card anywhere between 850 to 1100 and it's only okay. going to go up. And it's only going to go up, right? It'll, it'll never go down, right? It'll, it'll, it'll never go down. It'll and, never. and again, going, going back to the pricing on grading, you know, you can buy this card raw, you know, ungraded for a few hundred bucks and then grade it yourself. The key is just finding something in, in that mint condition. You know, like this is a mint nine. Uh, it's very difficult to do. This is a very, very hard card to find in mint condition. Okay. I know you had some, uh, some football cards also. I do. You got, do. You, got, you got some big boys there, I see. I've, I've got a couple of them. Okay. Um, you know, I, I started I started early, and I'm, I'm glad I did with this guy, uh, Mr. Brady. Oh, boy. The go to football. Yeah, this is one of uh, one of his most sought-after rookies, the Bowman Chrome rookie. This, um, this one's a nine. Okay. So I actually have, I actually have three of them. Right three here. of them? And, Holy and smokes. Nine. Yeah, in a nine condition. I started early with them when they were more affordable. I'm glad I did. What are what are we talking on the price on that one? Uh, anywhere between sixty five hundred to eight thousand right now. Wow, that's uh, that is amazing. Yes, that's... And, and, and you know that's that's a thing with the with the card market is having an eye for the future. You know, putting putting your money into who you think is going to be big. I bought these in two thousand four. You know, four years after he came out, when they were still affordable, right? I, I paid a hundred. I paid one hundred and fifty dollars for these. Look at that! Well, there you go. That's a that's something well learned. Now, how many stories have you heard about? Hey, I used to have, you know, ten thousand cards, and my mom, when I moved out, she threw them all out. How many times you hear that I, story? I hear the story all the time. I hear the story about how they used to take Michael Jordan rookies and put it in the bike spokes. <laughs> I, I, I always hear it. <laughs> Many times you hear the story. Hey, look, I had them in a, in a little bag and uh, yeah. they got, they got wet and soaking wet and crunched and crushed and stuff in here. You never know. <laughs> yeah, my, my grandfather always used to tell me he, he had all the original comics, all the original Spider-Mans and everything. And they left it in his attic when they moved and just, just left it. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Now, now, let me ask you another question because I have a couple of these little little boxes here. So, all right, so I have these these little boxes. These are like um, add-ons to to whole sets, right? And I don't think I ever paid. I think they marked eight bucks, but I don't think I paid eight bucks for these. They're originally sealed in the original. So, if you get a box that's originally sealed, what I mean, is there any value to some of these cards? It, it completely depends on the set itself. Okay. Um, a lot of a lot of baseball cards, as, as I'm, I'm sure you've heard and, and you know, from late '80s through the '90s, were were mass over uh, overprinted. So it just it depends on the set itself. So right. something like the '89 Upper Deck sealed set, which has the Griffey rookie in it, you know, that's that's a key set to have. Obviously, anything from '93 with Jeter is is key to have. Um, even the 94 products with A-Rod rookies are, are finally starting to, to come back. Um, you know, the, the further away we get from the Alex Rodriguez scandals. <laughs> oh, man. Now, I, I, I have a couple of others, and I, this is Willie, Willie Stargell back for the Pirates um, back in the day. I just happened to come across this one. Um, let me see. Well, we said Michael Jordan. And I know, yeah. I know you could trump this one. This is a, this is a, I don't know. It's a, I don't know card. It says the greatest basketball. I don't even know if this is even a card set commemorative issue. I believe that's a, I believe that's a promo. I, I think it's, I think it says like a certain hundred number, a hundred thousand on the back issued. Let me see. 10,000. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 10,000. That's, that's a promo. Commemorative set there. But, but let me see. I said, so this is my Michael Jordan. Let me see what you got. Where's, where's your Michael <laughs> Jordan? Well, I got I got two of them. I'll show you. Okay. Um, I'll start with, uh, with with a Grail card, the '86 '87 Fleer Michael Jordan rookie. Woo! One of the most heavily counterfeited cards in the business. Wow. 
Yeah, I, this I, one is uh, this one's a PSA eight. Okay. And what's the what's the price on that bad boy? The last I looked, it was it was over ten thousand. Wow. Oh boy. Now we we were talking about the grading and stuff. I have an old Ed Matthews. And I mean, guys, this is what he's talking about. As you see that little top there, it's kind of cut off. And this, the bottom is a little thicker than the top. So it's offset. But sometimes being like this, isn't it? Doesn't it make it a little bit more valuable? Like some of this error cards. Um, yes and no. Um, that's not really an error card. That's just a miscut. Um, okay. So with, with some thing like that it's really not going to increase the value and error is more like a, a variation in the printing or something like that um, um like 62 tops baseball for example um some of the cards came out with a a, a mint green color so that's like a variation um okay. 70 73 i believe tops baseball had issues with like different colors in the background or or ears were missing off the players um, due, due to bad printing. So stuff like that will, will fluctuate the value. Um, a miscut, a miscut's actually going to bring it down because when people grade it, you know, they want the highest grade possible. And that counts on your, on your surface and your centering for when you grade the card itself. So it's going to get a lower grade um, overall if it's, if it's miscut like that. Right. I, I remember um, there was one card that somebody had talked about, Tim McGraw, Tug McGraw, Tug McGraw was um, on a card and it was supposed to be Tug McGraw and I think Bo Diaz was the catcher. And uh, there's there's the picture of Tug McGraw, but the catcher was not Bo Diaz. And that came up as, as an error. Yeah, there, there's just so many different different forms of it now. I mean, you can, like like today's product, for example, I mean, you can you can find a card with the wrong name on it. You know, it's maybe worth 20 bucks or so. Right. Um, but you know, there's, there's just all different, um, variations like 80, 89, um, Fleer baseball, for example, there's an infamous card in there. Um, the, the Billy Ripken card. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or not. No, um, no. Tell us, tell us about it. So with the Billy Ripken card, when they did the, the shoot of the card, he's holding his bat. And if you read the bottom of the bat knob, it says some expletive words. So it says F, it says F face on it. Okay. Um, so they didn't realize when they released that card that it was, you know, that you, it was, you could you know, see that. So um, when they reprinted the sets and re and reprinted the cards in the next waves, um, there was different forms of that card. So they put a black box on it to censor it. They tried black scribble on a couple of the cards, um, white scribble um, just to, to censor the card. Wow. So a lot of collectors like collecting all different forms of that card. Uh, me, I have all of them except for the white scribble, which is the hardest one to get. Mm, okay. Wow. That's a, that's amazing. Now, let me ask you, like I have a whole, I have a set here that's sealed 1990s upper deck, 1990 upper deck. It's the whole oh, set okay. factory sealed. I mean, is it, is it worth more to have the whole set? Or is it worth more to have just the individual card? Uh, with that particular set, I would say just to have it just like that, um, your key card in there is going to be your Sammy Sosa. Um, you could pull it out to grade it, but it's a risk. You know, you could open that set up and it could be completely bricked together and the Sosa is damaged or the Sosa is completely miscut and worthless. Um, so something like that is, in my opinion, better uh, to leave sealed. Leave sealed. Okay. All right. So, so there you go, folks. We learned something today. Leave them sealed. Sometimes you're better off. I've always, I was always taught leave them sealed. I don't know when I bought them. I just bought them and just left them. I never opened them. I left them alone. Um, okay. So now let's move on. I have this, this um, gentleman here. I met here in, in Ocala, Zach, uh, Jack Perkins, and he autographed his card. What's would that bring value to it or would that take value away? Cause I, you know, I hear the purists, some of them don't want the card touched. And then some of them say, well, it has an autograph. So it, it's going to be more, which, which one would you go with? Uh, totally depends on the card and the player in the situation. So, you know, something, something like the Jordan rookie, 
I would absolutely love to have Jordan sign this. Um, you know, sign it and then send it to PSA because then what PSA will do is you'll get your grade on the card and they'll off, uh, authenticate the autograph as well. Okay. So, some, so something they, like that, absolutely. So then that card could probably go from 10000 let's say maybe 30000 What do you think? Easily. Oh, easily. easily. Wow. Easily. And the, wow. But the thing with, you know, and like I said, it all depends on the athlete itself, but the, the thing with Jordan is Jordan has an upper deck exclusive contract. So he's paid not to sign. So if, if anybody can get him to sign anything, it's, it's going to be a miracle. So he is paid by upper deck to only sign upper deck products. Okay. So it, if he signs for you at a, at a charity golf tournament or something, you're, you're very, very lucky. Um, you know, you're not going to go into Panini products and find Jordan autographs. You're, you're just not. Okay. So who, who right now is the, the, the premier baseball card right now today, this moment? As far as athlete or product? No, as far as, as product. Because back in the day, I mean, if you, you always wanted to collect tops. And then, you know, it was tops, 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 tops. And by the way, I've been to the factory in Scranton. They have a factory in Scranton. Um, but it's, it, uh, it smells like dirty paper. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, I remember back in the days, it was tops. And then I remember Upper Deck coming around in stadium. And then for me, it just got just inundated you came up with classic and the pinnacles and it was just like everybody had a card you know so who's the monster today I, again it, it depends on the person because tops has a baseball license so they're they're still pro, you know producing baseball cards their premier product is really tops chrome i mean tops tops chrome is is just one of those that you just can't go wrong with um dynasty is another set that they do uh, five star things things like that panini also does baseball now panini will have a higher price point on some of their products say like flawless for example you know that's a couple thousand dollars for a small little box of 10 cards but um the amount of stuff that you can get in there is just incredible the drawback on something like that is panini doesn't have a baseball license so they can print the card they can print the name but say if it's the game Yankees or something like that, and you get Lou Gehrig, you know, you'll see Lou Gehrig and it'll just say New York. So there's there's no Yankee symbols or, or Yankees team name or anything like that. Oh, there. okay. So, I... so some some people are taken back by that. Um, other people don't care. It, it really depends on the on the collector. Okay. Wow. That's that's good to know. So I mean, um Getting getting back into this, I mean, you you're sitting on a, a little bit of a small fortune there. I mean, is this so? If somebody wants to get in contact with you to get one of these cards or something, how would they get in contact with you? Um, well, I mean, I have an Instagram, uh, Mr. Keith Holtz, um, with periods in between. Um, but to be honest, a lot of these cards I'm showing are, are my personal collection, so I, I wouldn't sell them. <laughs> okay. That is put my children through college one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's another thing. There's some of the collectors, they do do a personal one and then they do ones uh, uh, that they do, they will sell. Um, I'm sure you got you got all those Tom Brady's. Are you holding on to all those? I'm waiting until he retires. When he retires and gets ready to go into the Hall of Fame, uh, to me, again, and when I said about maximizing the market, um, that will be the time to sell. Wow. Wow. Let me ask you a question. What's what's the cards that wow you? I mean, hey, what's, if you, you've you gone to baseball shows and you've done baseball shows, what's the card that you've gone around and go, wow, I want that one? Uh, I'll show you one. Just, again, you know, somebody that you just cannot get an autograph of these days and probably my favorite card in my collection. And that is my Michael Jordan autograph. Okay. And that's what, a 9.5 there? Yep, yep, Beckett Gem 9.5. Okay, I, I, well, I hate to ask the price on that bad boy, but I'm going to so, ask it. Yeah, last last one similar that I saw to this were over 10000 Wow. You ever had anybody come and say, hey, I'm going to give you 10000 for that card and you turn them down? I mean, I've had people ask if I'd be interested. I, mean, I don't bring them to shows, so a lot of people don't really know about them. Um, you know, I've, I've had people want to make offers on the Brady collection, really tempting offers, not something I want to do at this time. Okay. All right. 
I mean, so I, I'm starting out, uh, let's say I, I start out right now and I want to collect baseball cards and football. What's the biggest advice you would give me? Find a player that if, if you want to sell in the future, find a player that's affordable now that you can put money into and look back on it in 10 years and say, I did it right. So I'm telling new collectors now with football, jump in and get Drew Brees and Peyton Manning that's where you should be putting your money right now because their cards are still affordable. And as time goes by, it's, it's only going to get better. You know, Brady stuff is already very unaffordable. Even Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes stuff has gotten extremely expensive. Um, and, it, and it's hard to get same with Aaron Rodgers. So, but Manning and Brady are still affordable. Get it while you can. Okay. Uh, Drew Brees. Uh, didn't yep. Drew Brees retire? He just recently retired. He just recently retired and his stuff is on the way up. Uh, it's, it's going up in the last two years. There's been a real upward trend. And, it, and once he goes into the hall of fame, it's going to get, it's going to, in my opinion, it's going to get to the point where Brady is now and it's just unaffordable. Wow. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to have to go take a look at my, uh, redo my Christmas list and see maybe if I want a couple of Drew Brees, uh, maybe the wife will, uh, <laughs> let me break out my piggy bank and, uh, invest a couple in there. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you can you can still get really nice Breeze and Manning stuff for a few hundred dollars. That's it, and it's just going to do nothing but go up, go up. You know, they're okay. considered Class A players. They're really not attached to any scandals. Um, there's no nowhere to go but up. Another question, because a lot of the times we we deal with this, and 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 money is one of those deals. That, how easy is it to catch a fake, or how hard is it to catch a fake sometimes? It depends on the card. You know, no one's going to really make a mass reproduction or fakes of, you know, a five, $10 card. You know, this, this is one of the most heavily counterfeited cards in, in the industry. You know, my advice to new collectors is unless you have a seasoned person with you, never buy one of these ungraded unless you are 100% confident. Some of the things to look for on something like this, you want to look at the color of the flag right there. You're looking for an orange color. You want to use a, a jeweler's loop. You want to look at the borders. You want to see that the colors are clear breaks in between and not bleeding into each other, which, which a, a cheap reprint would have. Um, on the back, you want to look at logo, trademark placement. This color here is off on a lot of reprints. And then there was a mass wave of reprints in the early 90s um, that looked really, really, really good on these. I mean, really tough to tell except for one key factor. And right there on Jordan's average, where it says 27.2, they forgot to put the decimal point. So it's a clear giveaway that there's, there's, that's a, a counterfeit. Wow. Wow. It's, you, know, you, you really have to know what you're looking for. I mean, it, it, it happens and it happens not only in, in that, but are we talking about money? We're talking about coins. We're talking about, mm -hmm. I mean, wherever somebody can make a quick buck on you and, you know, turn something from five bucks into, you know, 5,000 bucks. So, I mean, if that's a, you said it's a $10,000 card. So if somebody said, Hey, I'll sell it to you for 3,500, it's a big, that's a big woo, right? That's, that's a really big woo. And even now, counterfeiters are getting better each day and you know they're they're coming up with counterfeit slabs now too so you, you have you have to know about counterfeit slabs as well you wow. know what to look for you know the, the the barcodes can be off on on the counterfeits the slab just feels different you know it could it could be a legit i've seen it too where the slab itself is fake and it says you know psa four or five or six and there's maybe an an authentic Jordan in there, but it's like a PSA three Jordan wow. that they, you know, they took from somewhere else. So it's, it, it's unfortunate. Um, but you know, one of the positive things I feel about this business is I feel a lot of collectors do watch out for each other. Um, you know, I'm friends with a lot of the guys that do shows with, you know, and you can, you can bring it to someone and say, Hey, you know, do you think this is real? Do you think that's real? Should I stay away from this? You know, it, it's always good that people watch out for each other in, in that aspect, but a card like that, um, you you have to be extremely careful if you're buying ungraded. Going to the shows is probably the best way of, of starting a decent collection and getting a good rep. Somebody who's reparable, uh, has a good uh, rep, and they can sell you these cards. 
what are the big shows that you go to? Um, so I do a couple shows here in Florida. I do the Bay Area Card Show in Clearwater, Florida. Um, that's usually the second weekend of every month. That is a really good show um, run by a guy named Brian. He does a great job for, for everybody down there, for the, both the vendors and the customers alike. Just a great atmosphere, and it's a good time. And then um, I do a show in Tampa as well. Usually that's like the last weekend of each month. Um, that's run by Chester and Terry, and they do a really good job down there. They run it at the, uh, at the Holiday Inn. You know, again, it's a great show. Um, collectors of all ages come in people from all over come in and uh it's always a good time okay now we, we talk about just baseball basketball you got any pokemon cards i know there's, there's people out there that collect that too right i do i i have pokemon cards yep i, I do a little <laughs> bit of everything <laughs> okay so i see this guys is more than just than just baseball football i know my son's got a couple of pokemon cards and he's like no dad those are worth big money and i'm like what First edition sealed boxes go for twenty thousand dollars plus right now. It's it, it is a big big market, very big. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So, well, listen, Key, I, I appreciate you being on, and and it was a uh, it's it's amazing to learn some of this stuff. If somebody wants to get in touch with you, how would they get in touch with you again? Uh, Mister Dot Keith Dot Holtz on Instagram. Okay, there it is, everybody. And uh, as I always say. It's, a, it's amazing to learn some of this stuff. I hope you guys learned a lot of stuff. If you have any questions, I'm sure Keith would be more than glad to help you. As I always say, remember, guys, keep on swinging because every strike is going to get you closer to that next home run. Thank you. Thank you. If you like the show, please do me a favor. Subscribe, right? right. You see it? It's right there. Subscribe, share, like, and don't forget, put that bell on. It'll ding you when I put something else on, all right?